should be done. What should be done with him? I don't know. I don't think that's true. I think you have some very definite ideas about what should be done with Danny, and I'd like to know what they are. This is Curtis coming at you from East Barrett Studios, talking once again football. This time we're going to get back to my Dolphins. And as you saw in the intro, got to answer the question that's looming out there. I personally didn't want to touch with a 10-foot pole for many reasons. But there were so many comments like, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? And it's heating up in the news that I really had no choice. I felt like uh, I felt like the character in The Shining, the, the, the wife who's uh, getting berated. I got to finally answer it. So here we go. So I'm going to use something called the Gestalt method of coming to a conclusion. A uh, German philosophy on when you want to come to see if something is true or not, or right or wrong, however you want to say it. You don't start with the thesis, the main idea, and say yes or no. You just simply take the evidence that you have, validate or invalidate it, and then you get a pile. Pile of the validated and the pile of the invalidated. And ultimately, when one pile gets so big, you arrive at your gestalt. It's like the light goes on and you come to your conclusion. So, the first thing you have to ask when you want to acquire a player is what's the price? If there, even if it's in the draft, it's in free agency, it's in a trade, what's the price? Price determines everything. So, if the Miami Dolphins could get Deshaun Watson for a seventh round pick, nobody would complain. Nobody would say no. Even if you had Tom Brady on your roster in your prime, if you could acquire Deshaun Watson for a seventh round pick, you would do it. So, the price is really the issue. And I think the framework of that. Um, is where the due diligence comes in for this uh, regime and front office. And I don't know what the situation is, but how can you not do your due diligence? If the price is right, of course take it. Now the price is wrong right now for three first round picks and two uh, second round picks. That's insane. So that's the price, that's the first step. What is the price? Second is, Will the player play for you? How many players have been traded and they don't want to play for their team? And even drafted. John Elway refused to play for the team that drafted him. So will that player play for you? Now, uh, Watson really wants to play for Miami. He has a uh, no trade clause, so he can kind of control a lot of the situation. But from the staff, from the front office, you have to ask yourself this. The Texans signed him to a mega contract and a year later he won it off. So yeah, he wants to play for you now, but does he want to play for you tomorrow? And there is a question there because I always say this, uh, my Angelo once said, very, I use it all the time, believe somebody when they show you who they are the first time. And if a guy, if a, if a guy's gonna quit after getting a mega contract one year, no matter what, he will do it again. Doesn't mean he definitely will do it again, but the potential's there, obviously. So the next step would be, okay, um, what's the price? I can afford it as far as capital, uh, you know, uh, trade capital and things like that. Uh, he does wanna play for me, but can I afford it? fiscally. Now the cap is this flexible thing. It's like a gymnast, you know, a, a double jointed gymnast that can go in any direction, you know, but there are certain limits. There's certain realities that can't be, you know, you can't have $10, $100 million players on your team. So there is limits. And the Dolphins 
up until just a little while ago, yesterday, the day before, before, you know, they were number two over the cap and had to cut $26 million before week one. And they got rid of McKinney and a couple of plays and so they trimmed them. But they're still over the cap at this point. Still probably solidly over the cap. Now, if you trade for Watson, it's $40 million a year. And it's still 62 guaranteed. Tie in uh, Xavier Howard at 16, tie in Jones at round 16, you're talking $72 million between three players. That's a huge chunk of your cap tied in. And football is a team game. And again, it doesn't mean it's not possible, but that is putting stress on the team concept. Now, will Houston suck some of that money? I mean, if you gave them three first round picks, would they eat some of the salary cap? That would be a big, big thing, okay? So we have to ask ourselves that. Then we have to get to, you're, you're, you can afford the player, you can do everything to acquire and bring him to the team, all this, all this stuff. How does he fit on your team? You, you know, you might have a scheme, you might have, uh, a style of play, you might have a character makeup. What does it mean? Raiders used to play with all these wild dudes in the 70s, man, bar fighting and everything else. That was part of their thing, but it wouldn't fit it on the San Francisco 49ers or Don Shula's team. So what is your makeup? Now, one of the great things about Brian Flores is he is a man of character. He has portrayed a man of character. Now, there's been certain little things you could say, uh, and that's a broader subject. And I think a lot of things have been imposed on him to do some compromising from higher ups. But overall, Brian Flores has run a tight ship and the personnel on there fits what he said he was gonna do from the very beginning. And I think that is a core heart foundational principle that if it's broken, it really would take away a lot from Brian Flores as a head coach and what he's accomplished and the team. So how does a guy who's got 20 plus women accusing him of stuff? Now, the, turn, the talk was the Texans, all of a sudden he wants out and the Texans, you know, uh, 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 this is, these, these things come up. So like it was the Texans, they did it. I, I, anything's possible, but from a Texan standpoint, if these criminal cases didn't come up and he wanted out, they could have gotten probably those five picks or close to it, much closer than they are now. And he doesn't want to play for them anymore. So if they're the ones who created this out of whole cloth, it didn't serve their purpose. And two, if you're gonna have a conspiracy, you don't want 20 women in on it, their lawyers, all their family circles, something's gonna get out. So I don't believe it's a conspiracy. So you have that hanging over, whatever the case may be, 20 women, something not right went down. I mean, it's clear, it's clear. And then, he already wanted to quit on his team one year into it. So to me, that's a character issue. And I don't think it fits the mold. And even Brian Flores says that we're looking for people of high character here. There's no way that you can go out and get like, you know, 20 plus masseuses over the course of a year. And it's not something up with that. That's just weird in itself. You know, if you're doing it simply for your health, you want the same person who knows who you are and somebody who's going to return to continue the process that they've already been involved with to help you get better. Not just keep grabbing like, oh yeah, like a smorgasbord running through the, the all you can eat joint at the Chinese restaurant. You know, that's a little weird, all right? That's a little weird on, on my, uh, my, in, in my book. So then, you're going to invest vast amount of picks on this one player with, you know, he's been, he got injured and was out for a whole season. So even if he's, everything else is good, you're investing so much capital on a single position, on a single player in a game where players, careers, seasons can end like that. Then you tack on Tua. 
the number fifth overall pick who you've invested a year in, you pushed Fitzpatrick out, you sacrificed possibly making a playoffs last year to see what you got with them, to get him some time. You're gonna have to either A, let him ride the bench or move him on. So whatever you're trading to them, to the Texans, you have to, even if he's one of those picks, all that investment, that external investment's attached. I don't know. That's a lot for one player for a team game. Okay, so the real winning model for the most part has been cheap quarterbacks, quarterbacks on rookie deals, or like Tom Brady, quarterbacks willing to take cuts to extend that money out to help the team win. Maximizing your expense on a quarterback puts a lot of pressure on win now. All the Dolphins ready to win now. You know, you go back from 2000, you got Foles, Flacco, Dilfer, and Johnson, who were subpar quarterbacks, who, you know, they had nice runs, but they were sub subpar quarterbacks. They won Super Bowls. Then you have Eli, he won two. Eli, I wouldn't say subpar, I would say he's a good, above average quarterback who played exceptional in moments and in strings of games at key times. So that's six, uh, six wins. And then you have like 14 other wins in the Super Bowl by true elite quarterbacks. So it's like around 25 to 75%. Okay, so I can understand in that regard, having an elite quarterback does give you the higher percentage. But again, you have to take this one position realizing it's going to limit the team. And if you look at all these all elite quarterbacks, they had good teams around them. Now, Dolphins have some good components, good, but immediately the moment Watson is signed, if this occurs, you have to win now because the t you're running out of draft picks. Uh, rookies are coming up for big contracts. The team's going to start to dissemble. Okay, so this also cuts into the very principle that Flores and Greer started which is trying to accumulate, accumulate value. And they're going to lose a lot of value, no matter how talented he is. All these picks, all this investment, all this insecurity, all this instability is a huge, dramatic investment. It's vast. It's beyond like imagination because this, this, is, this is like, I mean, you got Austin Jackson, who you got your first round picking. Are you gonna let that guy guard Watson's back with all this value attached to him? I mean, Watson was sacked 49 times with Tunsil. How many times are you gonna be sacked with Jackson? So that means, are you gonna sit him, try to find somebody? You know, then you got Noah, who's gonna take maybe a year or two to get ready. So you're talking all these picks invested in the top five pick, these other two picks that you're waiting maybe a year or two down the road, you're talking, you know, what is it? Six, seven first round picks that all just kind of sitting here and not really, uh, not really having full advantage. Yeah, to me, it's just, it's, it doesn't really make any sense. And when you look at it, as I've said before, offensive line is the key. It's the key to all football. So you're gonna give Watson that kind of protection from, and how are you supposed to invest in this offensive line? Because I don't care if you got Watson, a good defense, and receivers and running backs, you got a thin and not highly talented offensive line that you're losing all these picks for. You've you had all these first round picks and you, you haven't been able to turn this thing into a star machine, this offensive line, and it's the key to all of football. So you can have this beautiful Porsche and have a Yugo engine in it, and what's it gonna do, okay? And it also puts a, a further pressure on Greer, because if they go for Watson, that means they're not comfortable with Tua. Do, you, do the Chargers with Herbert, are they looking for Watson, no, they're comfortable. Are the Patriots looking for Watson? No, they're comfortable. And those are two quarterbacks the Dolphins could have had. 
So if they are truly going after Watson, it just puts a host of issues. Now, I personally don't think they are. I think if they could get in for me a first round pick and maybe a trade of a player, something very cheap, then maybe, and then they could maintain Tua and Watson. But I don't, I just don't think they truly are. Are they doing due diligence? Of course. Is there some kind of subplot here to drive to it? I don't, you know, I don't know. But to me, it doesn't seem, uh, it doesn't seem logical. See, it reeks of desperation if they're truly doing this because it's all in now. It means that at the very core of their process, they screwed up big time and know it. Now, I'm not saying this is the case, but if it is the case, then they screwed up big time at a core process. They've screwed up and they're trying to paper it over. Now, Watson is more talented than Tua. He's probably always gonna be a better quarterback than Tua. But Tua has a perfect character. And he's looked pretty good so far. So. Where does the value lie? Attaching vast amounts of capital, starting the clock instantly, compromising your core principles as a front office and a head coach for a single player with so many questions around him, or sticking with the guy you drafted who even if he's like above average, let's say, all the extra capital that you can have by not investing in Watson, the cheap contract of two for another three years plus, you know, uh, the fifth five year tag, I think it added in, with a better team around him and more time to develop. To me, it's very clear. It's very, very clear. Tua is the right, guy for the job that they started. Now, will Mac Jones be a better quarterback? Will Herbert be a It's at this point, it doesn't matter. You can, if, 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 if Tua is not your guy and you build quality teams a year or two from now, there'll be other opportunities, reasonably well-priced opportunities to acquire something different. But you gotta let it ride. You gotta. Any if the Dolphins go get Watson and it's not a song and dance deal, to me, that the chances of disaster are high. So that's my gestalt. After going through all this list and looking all yes, all that heap is at the bottom a very, very talented quarterback. But quarterbacks do not win alone. To me, I'll take Tua, see what he can do, and build a better team around him. So if he isn't the guy, I'll find another quarterback tomorrow. I will not give everything online for a, for Watson's talent and totally uh, questionable circumstances. So this is Curtis. This is what I think. Doesn't mean what you think, doesn't mean it was right. We're gonna see. I, I wanted to cover this because it's a big topic and so many people asked for it. So I wanna hear your opinions. I could be wrong, but this, if I was Flores, that's what I would do. This is the road I would take. So thank you for staying to the end. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And in this case, comments, I really wanna hear the comments. I could be totally wrong. You know, I really wanna hear them. Anyway, uh, Thank you for staying to the end. Catch you next time and be well.